Okay, hello everyone. Now I've already tried to do this video a couple of times and every time I try to do it I cry so I thought let's just start the video crying. It's fine. Um, you probably saw recently or you know recently that um, our stepdad passed away uh, from cancer and it's been a really really crappy year. Um, actually my biological dad passed away as well and that's something we didn't tell anyone because there was no need to tell anyone because we don't speak to him anyway. Um, but my, my biological dad died from an illness called MS and he never gave me anything in my whole life apart from MS. And I'm, I don't know why I'm crying because I don't even feel sorry for myself because I live with it and I'm totally fine. But I think it's because it's such a big thing to actually tell everyone. Let me get some tissue. Okay, I'm back. I have wanted to tell everyone for so long, but I had to deal with it myself first. And when you see someone deteriorate from something that you know you have so much, it can be really, really heartbreaking and make you feel really sorry for yourself. But my diagnosis is very, very different to my dad's, my uh, biological dad's. Um, so let me tell you the story about what happened. Let me get, pull myself together first, because I don't even cry about this. It doesn't even upset me anymore. I, I shed all my tears a long time ago, feeling sorry for myself when I found out I had it. And I'm sure lots of people are like, what is MS? Um, MS is a disease called multiple sclerosis. It is not catching unless you have the gene. Um, and more than likely the gene will never trigger and you will never get it, but um, unfortunately mine did. Um, basically it is a disease that breaks down the nervous system, so um, it maybe attacks a certain area of the body and then the signals can't get through that nervous system so you lose sensitivity or you lose the triggers that make that part of your body work. Now there's different side effects that can happen with MS. Um, you can get dizziness, you can get mood swings, which I very often get, my poor husband. You can get um, fatigue, you can get, I've written some down, um, muscle spasms, tingling, numbness, your emotions are crazy, visual problems, speaking problems, dizziness. Um, now I sometimes get the speaking problem when I'm run down, I can't speak properly. My, it's not that I can't speak properly, I literally, my brain is just fuzzy and I can't find the words to say what I want to say. So I may be looking at a sofa and I say to someone, oh, that, that, and I literally can't find the word sofa. It's just my brain is all mushed up and that happens um, to people that have MS. They may get tingling, they may get, which I've had all of those, but I don't really t tend to get them anymore. Um, and I wanna tell you a little bit about my story and how I found out I had MS. So um, five years ago, I, just over five years ago, I had Harry. And um, I had a really long labour, 55 hours, and um, thought nothing of it. But then I couldn't properly see out of this eye. When I would move, I'd have tingling and I couldn't quite see out of that eye. Um, so I went to the doctors and they sent me to the hospital and I had an eye test done and they said it's optic neuritis. So I thought nothing of it. Then I fell pregnant with Edie and I had Edie and I had a C-section with Edie um, and the afterwards I am um, a good few months afterwards I was training I was getting my body back into shape and I felt absolutely great and then I went blind in one of my eyes so I went to the doctors and they gave me a patch and um, I took an Instagram with, with the patch on my eye I've actually taken it down now because um, it reminded me of a time that I didn't want to be reminded of at that time. And um, my, one of my good friends, Renee, who's a doctor, she rung me and said, why have you got a patch on your eye? What's going on? And I said, I don't know, I just lost sight in it. And she said, oh, have you ever had it, anything like that before? And I said, oh, a little bit in my other eye, but it's, I think it's just optic neuritis. And she said, please, 
can you just book in and have an MRI scan? I was like, why? Why do I need an MRI scan? And she said, because um, it can be linked to MS. And I was like, oh, right. Um, my dad has MS. And she said, well, then even more you need to book in. So I went to the doctors and they put, booked me in to have an MRI scan, which I had done. And then I had to go and have a lumbar puncture, which is the worst thing I've ever had in my life because they... Oh, you don't even want to know. I'm not even going to tell you. Anyone that's had it done will know how horrific it is. And um, they had to make the hole a little bit bigger. So I was so ill afterwards. I was in bed for a week. I couldn't get out. Every time I tried to lift my head up, my head would be in so much pain and I'd be sick. Um, and I had all this done knowing I had MS. I knew I had it, so there was really no point. But I suppose you have to do those things. And then the day after my daughter's first birthday... So this was happening throughout the year. The day after my daughter's first birthday, I um, went to the doctors for my appointment to find out if I had MS. And they said I had it. Um, and there's not really much more I can say about it apart from I was so... I wasn't really heartbroken, but all I knew of MS is that my dad had it and he was bedridden from it and had dementia and couldn't do anything from it. So that's the only thing I knew about MS and I did not want to research it. I didn't want to know. I spent about a week or so in bed crying every night. Not, not in bed, but I didn't have any energy anyway. So I did spend a lot of time in bed and had to stop going to the gym, which is something that I completely love had to change my life completely really um, because I was just exhausted all the time and my vision hadn't come back in that eye and actually it's never come back completely. I still can't see perfectly out of that eye um, and the colours that I do see aren't true colour anymore which is great being a makeup artist but um, you know these are the things that you have to live with and I did cry myself to bed to sleep every night for about two weeks thinking oh my god what if my vision never comes back what if this eye gets worse as well um you know all the things that go through your head and just more thinking i won't be able to walk my kids down the aisle i won't be able to be there oh, but after about a week or so of feeling sorry for myself i was like Do you know what i am not this person i am not gonna lay here crying, feeling sorry for myself because other people have it, other people live with it and get on with life. So I just got on with life. My husband is amazing. And um, oh. yeah, my husband is amazing and he did all the research because I did not want to look into anything. I just bury my head in the sand and say, I haven't got it. I haven't got it. If I don't believe I've got it, I haven't got it. So my husband did all the research and he, that's why he started Hayes Kitchen because he was researching all the food that I could eat and that would be good for me. So I'm texting me now. Um, so he researched everything and I went to the hospitals and they said the medication I could have and whatnot. And yeah, my husband cooks every night for me. He, I literally have so many greens. I don't really drink. Very, very, very occasionally do I drink because um, if I do drink, then it knocks me back and makes me need more rest. Basically, I need a lot of sleep. I need um, not as much as, as I used to. I've got way better and I think I managed to live with it really, really well. And I do eat very, very well. I eat really, really clean. I eat a lot of veg because it's brain food. I eat a bag of kale a day, literally. Um, and yeah, we just live with it and it's fine. It's, it's you know, I've learned that my triggers 
are, my eye is actually my trigger. And I've learned to find that as a great thing. If I, if my vision goes a bit more blurred in this eye, I go and rest. I go and have a sleep. My body is telling me, you need to slow down, you need to rest. If I can't find the words to speak, I go and rest. I know my triggers and I know what I can and can't do. And um, yeah, it's just something I live with that has changed my life. Um, but it's also moulded me to be the person that I am. And I know there's probably loads of people that live with MS. Loads, 100,000 people in the UK have it. It's a massive thing. And that's why I wanted to do a video because I wanted to, for all those other people that have just been diagnosed with it or it's taken me five years to get to this point where I can actually do a video and say it. And I don't ever cry about having MS, ever. But because I'm telling loads of people in the whole world, basically, that's why I'm feeling sorry for myself and I don't even feel sorry for myself. It's so crazy. But I think actually a lot of my friends don't even know I have it because I would hate for anyone to feel sorry for me because this is the card I was dealt, I live with it. I could have been told that I have a tumour behind my eye and a week to live, but I was told I have MS and I have a life to live. Not just a week, I have a whole life to live. And that's why I, this must be so horrible for people to watch because you can't even hear me, I'm just crying. Um, and that's, you know, the life I lead. I listen to my body completely and I manage every day and I live every day and I don't think I've ever missed a day of work and you know I've I just carry on and there are things that remind me you know I get tingling in my hands or in my feet and I get numbness and I get eye spasms sometimes and I still can't see out of their eye. I constantly have reminders, but those reminders I don't really see as a massive negative thing anymore. They're a thing that remind me to rest. They're a thing that remind me to live. They're a thing that remind me to slow down, you know? Um, and yeah, I just felt like it was really important to share my story, to let people know that life does go on. And my MS is relapsing and remitting, which means that um, when I do have an attack, which I haven't had for two years, when I do have an attack, um, I might get a side effect, I might need to sleep loads, um, but my body 90% goes back to normal. Maybe a little bit of it never completely recovers like my eye, but my body goes back. Um, there are cases and people that have MS that is progressive, which is what my dad had, um, but I'm just doing it from my story um, as a relapsing and remittive MS person. I don't know what you would call it, but um, yeah, I just really wanted to share my story and also sometimes if I say things wrong or forget things, it's because, not always, sometimes I'm just useless and I forget things, but it may be because of that um, and I just think it's really important to share my story and to say that People have stuff. People have stuff going on in their lives and you may look at them through an Instagram filter and think that everything is perfect. It's not always. It's not. Actually, my life is pretty perfect. Apart from having MS, I have two beautiful children, a lovely husband, a nice home, and a great family. <laughs> oh, But, we all have an issue or we all have something going on and I wanted to, I really, really have wanted you to know for years but I had to deal with it in my head and I thought I had until I've just gone and done this video and then I'm crying. Um, actually, if you talk about it me, to me on a day to day, 
I'm not upset and I don't cry about it because that's life. And I know what I have. I know the card I was dealt and I deal with it daily and I live life. And that's all I wanted to say. I will put in links below to any um, connecting websites and stuff in case you want to know a little bit more about MS or um, you want to talk to someone and I don't know if I can advise anyone because I'm not an expert at it, I just have it. I probably don't know enough about it, I just live with it and I just listen to my body every day and I try to live life as much as possible for my kids. And I think I did write loads of notes which I haven't followed at all. Um, but yeah, but life is good. I don't smoke, I don't really drink and I can now exercise again. And that is my one true love. I love to exercise. I can't do anything that moves my head too much, but um, I am back in the gym. I haven't had an attack for two or so years um, and touch wood, I will maybe never have another one. Um, but I always have my reminder. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry if it was a very emotional video or if you couldn't even understand it, but um, I thought it was an important one to share. And I'm so pleased that people know. But please don't feel sorry for me. Just because I'm feeling for, sorry for myself at this present moment, I, I don't feel sorry for myself normally. Um, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time with a much more positive video, hopefully. Take care.